I'm going to show you around the AG Grid main demo. This here is AG Grid. We've got a bunch of columns and we have a bunch of rows. The columns can be sorted by clicking on the column header. You can sort multiple columns by holding down the shift key. You can resize columns with this drag handle in the column header, or you can resize a group of columns at the same time. So here I'm going to resize the participant group by dragging here, and you can see that name, language, and country all resize as one. The grid comes with filtering. The first thing I'll show you is the quick filter up here, which filters across all columns. So if I put in here, Tony, it'll bring me back all the names which have Tony in it. I can put in additional words here. I'll put in chess and it then brings me back all the rows which have Tony or chess in any of the columns. Let me take this out. Each of the columns has its own individual filter as well. So if I go to country, for example, and bring up the menu here, I can see the country filter. You'll note that the rows are animating nicely into place as I select and unselect values. And we also have what we call the floating filter at the top of each column, which is a quick access to that columns filter. The grid is fully editable here in the country column. If I double click, I can choose a different country or for the game name, for example, this is a text. So I can just type stuff in here as if I'm inside Excel. I can also copy a range. So if I hold down the mouse, I can copy a range here. I'll press Control and C and then here I'll click and press Control and V and again, Control and V. I can also drag a range down by using the drag handle here. And just like Excel, if I drag it down like this and let go of my mouse, it'll copy those rows down. You may have noticed the status panel here in the bottom right. As I'm selecting a range, the status panel is giving me summary aggregations on the selected range. This is really handy. A lot of the time people will export to Excel just to do this. Now let's refresh to get back to original screen. The grid comes with lots of themes. Here I'm showing the Alpine theme. I'll move to the Alpine dark, or I can move to the Balam theme or a material theme. So you can pick any of these themes that you want, and then you can further customize them with CSS variables. If the theme is similar to what you want, but you want to make some tweaks, you can also apply no theme, which I've done here. And here the grid is not applying any styling at all. So you can create your own theme from the ground up. So you don't need a headless grid to have full control of the CSS and styles. Now this grid right now has 100 rows. What I'm going to do is bring in 100,000 rows. So now the grid here has 100,000 rows in it. And you can see that the scrolling is still really, really, really smooth. I can even grab the scroll thumb here and bring it down to the bottom and bring it back up to the top. And the scrolling is still very smooth. I can also do sorting and the grid is sorting the 100,000 rows in memory and similar for filtering. The grid filters the 100,000 rows in memory and it all works super fast. A grid with 100,000 rows isn't very useful unless you can group and aggregate the data. And that's what I'm going to do now. Before I do so, let's take a quick look at the data itself. Here we can see we have a language column that has a set of languages. Next to that is the country column with a set of countries. We then have a game column with a set of games. And then we have the bot column, which is a Boolean column. Okay, we'll start off with language. We'll grab the language column and bring it up to the group drop zone and let go. The grid is now grouped to the 100,000 rows by language. The numbers here in the brackets are the number of rows inside each group. So within German, we have 4,230 rows. If I click and expand here, we can see the original rows. Now you can group by as many columns as you like. So I'll also bring country up into language, which makes sense because countries can actually be grouped by their languages. I'll also bring up game name and I will bring up bot. So the grid is now grouped by these four columns. Now we can see if we expand English, for example, we've got Ireland and United Kingdom. Then within Ireland, I can expand and we have all of the game names. And then if I click on one of the game names like Battleship, I can see here just true. There was no false values inside there. And then down here, I've got the leaf level nodes. Now it would be great if we could have values up here, aggregation values, so to speak. The best way to show that is to bring the monthly breakdown over to the left hand side. And the reason why I did that is the monthly breakdown cells all have nice numeric values. And then on the right hand side here, I'm going to drag the monthly breakdown columns all the way down to the value sections and let go. And voila, the grid has now aggregated all of those 100,000 rows up through the hierarchy of groups. Okay, now look at this. I'm going to edit these values here. And as I'm editing the values, the grid is keeping the group levels up to date. That's pretty cool. And I can also control Z, the undo functionality works as well. Again, pretty cool. I'm now going to show you pivoting. So I'm going to refresh my web page to reset the demo and bring back 100,000 rows again. 
Before I put the grid into pivot mode, remember the language column has a set of languages and the country column has a set of countries. Okay, pivot mode is turned on with this toggle up here on the right hand side. I'm going to press one, two, three. Right, the grid is now in pivot mode. I'm going to get our language column and drop it into the pivot zone. We can now see that the grid has created columns from the values which were inside the rows. That is, we have columns, English, French, German, Greek, etc. It has done a pivot. What was rows are now columns. Now, pivoting implies aggregation. So for this to make sense, we need to choose a value that we are also pivoting on. So I will take one of the monthly breakdowns. I'll pick Jan and I'll bring that down to the value section. And now the grid has aggregated the 100,000 rows by language and presented it in a horizontal pivot. So here I can see that the Jan values aggregated for English are 1.2 million. Or is that 1.2 billion? I think that's 1.2 billion. Now, just like with row grouping, you can pivot by as many columns as you like. So I'll go back here to my columns and I'll pick country, which is a nice one to play with language because countries can be categorized by language. And when I drop it into the pivot zone, we can see here now that the columns can also be expanded to show the countries. You can also mix grouping with pivoting. So I'll pick some more columns here, game name. I'll bring that over to the row group drop zone we used before and let go. I can now see that we're grouping by game name and we can again group by as many columns as we like. So I'll bring bot in here and now we can see here we're grouping first by game name and then secondly by bot. And at the same time, we continue to pivot using the columns. Brilliant. Now, let me point something out here. This is still the same grid we started with and has all of the features of AG Grid. We can still do range selection. We can still copy into the clipboard. We can still do selection here. It's a pivot grid, but we're not losing any functionality by going into the pivot grid. All the features work together. Okay, next up, I want to show you charting. So I'm going to refresh the web page again to reset it and bring back 100,000 rows again. I'll drag monthly breakdown over to the left hand side again to get some nice number of values here. I'll select a range of values, right click from the context menu, choose chart range, choose one of these many chart types. I'll choose the first one column and then I'll choose grouped column. And voila, a chart has popped up. Now, if you want this charting experience inside your application, all you need to do is set enable charts equal to true as a grid property. There's no charting code needed in your application. So with AG Grid, you get this rich charting experience inside the grid out of the box. Now we can change this chart range here as we drag it around. You'll see the chart is updating in real time as we have different data to chart. We can also bring out the chart options here. We've got multiple chart types, plenty here to choose from to keep you busy. We've also got different themes. If I right click here, we can see the different color themes. We can change the data here rather than dragging the range. For example, I can pick a dimension. I'll pick language here. So we now have languages on the bottom or country. And then inside the format, there are tons of items here where you can configure the grid. For example, here I can enable a title and I'll double click to change the title. Let me put in here my cool chart. Let me bring the properties back. And there's just loads and loads of stuff here that you can change. It's basically the Excel charting experience right inside the grid. Lovely. When you're ready with the chart, right click, copy image, and then paste it into an email. Okay, we can close this chart down here. Okay, let's do a real world example with charting. Let's say you want to chart the top five countries January figures. So the first thing we would do is group by country. We'll then bring John over to the left hand side. We'll aggregate by John, so we'll bring it down to the value section. We'll then sort by John, so that the highest value is at the top. Then we'll select the top five, one, two, three, four, five. Right click, chart, column, grouped. So we can see Ireland and France are the top two. We can change the sort, and now we're looking at the bottom five. Cool. Let's bring in Feb. We'll bring Feb over here. We need to aggregate by it, so we'll bring it down here. And we'll drag our range across to also cover Feb. Brilliant. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you with charting, and that's what happens when we enter pivot mode. So I'm going to refresh the page here again and go back into 100,000 rows again and go back into pivot mode and bring up a pivot chart. Now the pivot chart is going to reflect what's inside the pivot grid in real time as I'm adding in my values and dimensions. So now I'm grouping by language and country and I'm pivoting by bot 
over January. And that's exactly what the chart is showing. And here, look at this. If I expand English, look at English down here in the chart. It expands into Ireland and United Kingdom, the two dimensions underneath English. Likewise, let's do French. And the chart expands French. Brilliant. And that brings us to the end of the walkthrough of this demo page. Now this didn't show everything to do with AG Grid because AG Grid's got so much stuff going on, we can't build one example to demonstrate it all. So I'd advise you to go to the documentation and look at all the other cool things that AG Grid can do, such as customizing the grid using the framework of your choice, or look at a server-side row model where you can lazy load data from the server to manage massive amounts of data. We've also got some cool master detail features and then also streaming data and live updates, something again I didn't get a chance to go through in this example. To learn more, please go to our documentation. There's other videos in there as well. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube and leave a comment. Thank you.